We begin with video games. In spite of what your parents told you, they actually can improve hand-eye coordination and can also be powerful learning and teaching tools. As our Bertha Coombs found, they can even help train future surgeons. Game Changer is this week's cover story. Sam Glassenberg's family was never terribly impressed with his dream job. I started out at LucasArts making Star Wars games, spent many years at Microsoft, and this entire time it sort of made me the disgrace of the family because I'm the first one that never went to medical school. But the medical force proved strong. When his dad asked him to make an anesthesiology training app, it turns out 100,000 doctors downloaded it. That led Sam to launch Level X video games to train doctors on procedures ranging from intubating patients to removing cancerous polyps. They're related to hand-eye coordination and how you maneuver in a patient scenario in, or in a surgical scenario. For doctors, the real game changer is being able to practice and even earn education credits anywhere on their phones. The ability to use new devices in a virtual uh, environment in a gaming uh, opportunity the allowed to push the boundaries of a particular new device is not only really exciting, but I think it's the future of interventional cardiology. And maybe the future of healthcare in faraway environments like the moon and Mars. NASA has now tapped the video game startup to help train astronauts to handle medical issues when they're in space. My job is really to invest in groundbreaking technologies and capabilities that in 10 years time when we are ready to go to Mars, these things will be so sophisticated. Doctors at the Translational Research Institute for Space Health, a NASA partner organization that's known as Trish, say that they chose Level X over more established medical video training firms because of its strong virtual reality graphics and its gaming engagement. Rather than making this a really boring uh, type of uh, practice for uh, these non-expert users, uh, for our astronauts, it's going to be fun. Over the next year, they'll develop instructional games that can reproduce the effects of zero gravity, radiation, and different gases that impact the body in space. I never would have thought that a few decades later we'd be using video game technology to help astronauts train for real space missions. This is one of the most exciting projects I've ever worked on in my life. Made extra sweet now that he's no longer the black sheep in the family. For On The Money, I'm Bertha Coombs. So are video games like this realistic enough to actually teach medical procedures? Dr. Paul Friedman is the chair of the Department of Cardiovascular Medicine at the Mayo Clinic. And Dr. Friedman, thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me. What did you think of what you saw here? Well, you know, any human activity, riding a bicycle, playing a piano, takes practice. And the more you can practice without putting people at risk, the better. So I think they're on the right track. In terms of what you can actually do for real procedures, what have you seen at the Mayo Clinic? Do you use virtual reality? How? We, we do. We've actually established a virtual reality lab right next to our catheterization laboratory. <laughs> Here's the idea. You're going to do a procedure, and let's say it's somebody who has slightly atypical anatomy. Imagine being able to walk into that heart, look at the heart, see that person's specific anatomy. Well, we can do that now. You put a CT disc into a computer, put on the glasses, and you're literally walking into an image of that individual's heart. Wow. So before you do the procedure, you can have a sense of where their unique uh, valves or uh, appendages or other structures are situated. That's amazing. How long has yeah. that been around? So this is fairly recent. It's all still emerging technology. And there are the things you can do with this. Another example would be, say, a doctor at a faraway hospital is doing a procedure and it's not one they've done before. They get into a situation where they need help. Imagine that we could put on glasses, they wear glasses, and now we're in the room. <laughs> and um, so there's a lot, now that's still more in a research and development phase, but we've done early animal studies at a distance. And so the hope is we can um, share expertise through the use of these tools.